Hey, I'm Circle Strafe, and welcome to the Mythical Creatures Bestiary. Today, we're going to be talking about the most famous Gorgon of them all, Medusa. Medusa is a unique chimera from Greek mythology. As a Gorgon, Medusa has a very specific combination of traits. She's humanoid for the most part, but she has snakes instead of hair and large wings on her back. Her most famous trait is her unendingly hideous looks, said to be so terrifying that they turn men to stone. There's a number of fairly diverse origin stories for this character, and we'll go over a couple of these now. Classically speaking, Medusa was seen as one of three sisters, all with similar traits. In this interpretation, she was the daughter of the god Phorsus and his sister Ceto. She was born as this horrific half-snake creature that she's come to be known as. In contradiction to this, a lot of ancient Greek art depicts Medusa and her sisters as serpentine monsters born of the gods Echidna and Typhon. These gods are colloquially known as the mother and father of Greek monsters. Echidna is seen as a half-serpent, half-human deity, known to have birthed many other similar creatures. As an example, she gave birth to the three-headed dog Cerberus and the Greek chimera of Lycia. A later interpretation of Medusa is that she was once an incredibly beautiful maiden. Poseidon took advantage of that beauty and assaulted Medusa inside of Athena's temple. Cassandra Eerson, in her book, Fabulous Creatures, Mythical Monsters and Animal Power Symbols, describes what happened next. She says, In revenge against Medusa, not Poseidon, for the defilement of the temple, Athena changed Medusa's golden hair into hideous yellow serpents. Whatever the case of Medusa's origins, one element to her story is always relatively the same. How she died. She is an antagonist in the tale of Perseus. As much of the mythology of Medusa revolves around this particular tale, we'll go over the cliff notes of that tale now. King Polydectes wanted Perseus out of the picture so he could take advantage of Perseus' mother. The king hatched a scheme to shame Perseus into getting what he wanted. Under the guise of a high-profile marriage, Polydectes ordered everyone in the kingdom to bring him gifts. He knew that Perseus was way too poor to bring anything substantial. The king used this as an excuse to order Perseus to retrieve a gorgon's head for him. He fully expected that Perseus would die in the attempt. Eventually Perseus was led to and was provided tools by Greek gods. These included a mirrored shield from Athena, a sword from Hephaestus, a helmet of invisibility from Hades, and the winged sandals of Hermes. Medusa was the only Gorgon that was mortal, so she was the Gorgon that Perseus targeted. Perseus approached the cave where Medusa and her sisters were sleeping. Using his mirrored shield and his godly sword, he sliced off Medusa's head and put it in a sack. The other two Gorgons tried to chase him around the cave, but his other godly tools let him make a swift and invisible exit. In the tale where Poseidon had defiled Medusa, from the decapitation sprung the offspring of that embrace. Out of her neck emerged Pegasus, the winged horse, and Chryseor, the man with the golden sword. Chryseor went on to father other creatures like Geryon, and quite interestingly, Echidna. Echidna, as we recall, was the mother of Medusa in some versions of the tale. Perseus travelled back home and found that his mother had been abused by the king. He discovered that she was forced to take refuge within a temple. Enraged, Perseus moved to meet King Polydectes, who was incredibly shocked to see Perseus still alive. The king asked if Perseus had brought what he originally wanted, and Perseus confirmed. He lifted up Medusa's head and turned the king to stone. In one version of the tale, whilst travelling back to the king, Perseus used Medusa's head to turn Atlas to stone near Africa, when Atlas tried to attack him. Droplets of Medusa's blood spilled onto the ground and turned into the vipers and snakes of Africa. 
other droplets fell into the sea, forming the stone-like coral reefs of the oceans. According to the ancient poet Hesiod, Medusa's cave was said to be located on the island of Sarpedon, close to the Greek island of Lesbos. This island is a non-existing mythical location. This concept was common within Greek myth, with other examples including the islands of Iia, Erythea, and the islands of the blessed. A lot of tales tell of Medusa being born in the sea, explaining her island home and why many of her ancestral origins utilize ocean-based deities. After his quest, Perseus gave Medusa's head to Athena. The goddess then placed the head on her shield, the Aegis. One of the snakes from Medusa's head shows up in a later Greek tale of Heracles, with its powers to turn people to stone still intact. Athena gifts the snake to the heroic figure so that he may save a town with it. Medusa's tale has been fairly uniquely long-lasting for a Greek myth. She appears in numerous pieces of artwork and stories in different cultures throughout history. Her detached head appears in cameos of Roman tales as a protective symbol. Alexander the Great depicted her visage on his own breastplate whilst attempting to conquer the world. In Christian Europe, millennia after the original story, Dante Alighieri utilized her in his Inferno as a threat that could halt his journey. That's it, thanks for watching. Thanks for liking and all the positive feedback so far. It really helps to support the channel. Consider checking out the Patreon if you want to support the channel further. If you're new to this series or new to the channel, click here to watch another video where we cover the Norse revenants, the Draugr. Or click here to see another series we're doing about Dante's Inferno. And we'll see you in the next video. Toodles.